Hey, welcome back campers. Today, we are going to look at section 5.3 entitled Riemann Sums and Definite Integrals. Doesn't that sound like fun? All right, so in the last section, we looked at uh, the area under a curve, and we found it by getting the area of rectangles and then adding them all up. Uh, but the thing about those is that the, the base or the width of each rectangle was exactly the same. Well, what if they weren't the same? What if they were different widths? Would that do the trick? Would that be as effective? Well, it really is, and it really does broaden the process, and it generalizes it uh, to where you can um, apply it to a lot more different things. So you're going to see this again uh, in the calculus series, uh, as well as maybe in some physics and engineering. Uh, so these Riemann sums, uh, they're they're pretty pretty important. Uh, so let's get into it. So we're gonna let f uh, be a function defined on the closed interval from a to b, and we're gonna let the delta, not delta x, just delta, be a partition of that interval given by. Uh, we're gonna let a equal sub or x sub zero. And that will be less than x sub 1, which is less than x sub 2, which is less than da 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 da, all the way up to less than x sub n minus 1, which is less than x sub n. And that x sub n is going to be the b from the interval. So it starts with a and goes all the way up to b. So we're taking this interval and we're dividing it up. Uh, into partitions or into sections. So delta x sub i is the width of the ith sub interval. <clears throat> so it's the distance from this, like from x sub zero to x sub one, or from x one to x two, x two to x three, and so on. So if c sub i is any point in that interval, so if it's anywhere in between like these two x's or in between these two x's. Then the sum, and we've seen that before, <clears throat> so this is the height, that's the width, so it's taking those rectangles again. So this sum in particular is called a Riemann sum of f for the partition delta. All right, that was a lot of stuff in there. So what on earth is this thing? So visually it's gonna look something like this. You can take uh, any curve, and we're gonna make it kind of simple, just because. So we're gonna take a look at that. So this is saying that I can create rectangles of different widths. They can be um, outside uh, of the, the region, they can be totally inside. Uh, they just don't have to be the same width. So I'm gonna draw my first one like this. Let's make the next one like that. And then I'm going to draw a big one just like that. Okay, so I'm looking at it from A to B. And each one of were you know at the edge of this rect of these rectangles that would be like your different x's, so this would be like x sub one, and x sub two, and then I'm at the b. So I'm just using three three rectangles. So the n just tells you how many rectangles uh, you're using. <clears throat> okay, so the theorem says I can choose. C and it can be anywhere in that interval that I want. So for my first one, I'm going to pick it to be there because that's the height of the rectangle. So this C is really what's generating the height and it can be anywhere in, in there. So like this C on rectangle number two would be over here. So it's not in the middle, it's not on the far left or the right, it's just kind of right there. And then on this third one, it's right there. 
so that's all it's kind of saying is that they don't the rectangles don't have to be uh, of equal width and the heights don't have to be generated by you know one one of the two sides it can it can be generated by somewhere uh, in there so the width of each of these rectangles is given by delta x sub i and then the height is given by f of c sub i. So this distance would be the delta x, and then the height would be what you get if you plug in that, those uh, corresponding c values. Okay, so notice that the phrase a Riemann sum instead of the phrase the Riemann sum. So this c that we're choosing is a random point in the rectangle and it doesn't matter which one. It can be anywhere in there as long as it's generating the height of the rectangle. This is due to the fact that the choice of C is arbitrary. So for any given function F to find on that interval and a fixed partition, one might produce different Riemann sums depending on which C you choose. So like if I adjusted the width of each of these rectangles, the C could be in a different spot. Um, and then the, the, the total area on these rectangles would be different. They'd be close, but they would be different. <clears throat> okay, so to keep it kind of more simple, we're gonna just look at common types of Riemann sums, and we're gonna stick pretty much with these three for the class. So if your CI is equal to X sub I minus one, which means it would be the left side of the rectangle. You have a left Riemann sum. If the CI equals XI, so CI and XI are the same, then you have a right Riemann sum. And this is really what we did in the previous section. These are representative of your upper and your lower sums. So it's technically left and right. <clears throat> okay, and now if the C sub i is equal to the average of the two x's, then we have a midpoint Riemann sums. So we're going to be sticking with these three. The first two we've already looked at, uh, the left and the right, it would be upper and lower. And it doesn't matter if the upper is the left or if the upper is the right, it can switch. Uh, so it's this third one that we're really going to introduce this midpoint. Uh, and with these types of Riemann sums, even though they can be different widths, we're still going to kind of stick to rectangles of equal size. So we're still going to kind of make them equal to each other but we don't have to if we don't want to uh, but we kind of do because that's a little bit easier to do all right so in the next video uh, we'll go ahead and look at uh, some actual examples this is the theory of it uh, and the background information i'm not going to require you to regurgitate this uh, this is just so you can see where it comes from